I'm Darren, I'm from Movie Reviews 101, and today we're going to talk about Pacific Rim Uprising, directed by Stephen S. Knight and starring John Boyega and Scott Eastwood. The story here follows how the world looks ten years after the events of the first movie. The war is over, and we've seen how the war, the world has recreated itself rebuilt the big cities but left certain cities just derelict with corpses of the kaiju monsters. We have the son of Stacker from the first one, Jake, played by John Biega, and he's sort of a squatter, he steals just to get supplies like hot sauce and Oreos because advertisement in movies. Yeah, what the hell? That, that's where all of the product placement came in, the John Boyega introduction. Anyway, he steals for a living, gets caught, and his stepsister brings him back into the programme for the Jaeger pilots to become a ranger to help train the new cadets, which he brings another fellow little thief character, Amora, the 15-year-old genius engineer, along to become a cadet. But then the kaiju return, and they have to suit up in the Jaegers, and he has to follow in his father's footsteps. Well, that doesn't sound familiar. Is this Independence Day? No, no, it's not Independence Day. No, it has similarities to Independence Day Resurgence, but we're going to get to them soon. But now I have to talk about a few things I did like. So it's Darren's ups. The three things I did enjoy. The fight sequences are what you expect. Big giant robots versus big giant monsters. <laughs> Nothing else really happened. <laughs> Let's be honest, that's all we wanted to see. The final fight has a good couple of tracking scenes. But they're basic what you expect. Fine, you're going to just be able to go, yeah. And unlike Transformers, at least you can tell the difference between who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. Fine. My second good thing is going to be, I liked how we went and looked at the world, how we saw the rebuilt big cities, Tokyo, Sydney, because they're going to be important later in the movie. Yes, but then we looked at some of the abandons, which just had like, the skeletons of the kaijus, which looks really great to see. The effects haven't cleared up all the cities. And the final thing is, I don't think there's any bad acting in this movie. It's The problem is there's not much for the actors to do. They all do the basics very well. I think Boyega and Kelly have some good chemistry for like the comedy side of things because they both have broken heart stories like, because of what's happened to their families through the war. They were fun to watch together, but everyone else is just... You know what you're going to get. Nobody overdoes it. Nobody is terrible. Nobody is going to win an Oscar or anything else. It's just going to be a fine, simple. So here's the fun bit that we love the most. The bits that Dara says down to. I'm going to try and stick to three, but this may turn into slight rants. Where we have a great cast of Boyega from Star Wars, obviously, we have some wasted talent here. We have some of the Asian actors who we should sit, we know who are like lead characters, lead actors, in some of their home nation's movies are brilliant actors. They are reduced to Marshall or scientist or stepsister with important message. We should see a lot more from these characters. These actors are wasted big time in this film. There is this really, really stupid love angle that we have Jake and Nate fighting over this girl who is as far as I can tell, she's just there. I don't really know what she does apart from walk around, say hi. We don't learn what her job is. She does nothing to help this story. There's a. It just sort of tries to play that these two rivals bicker, but in all due, effect, due respect, they have a lot of mutual respect for each other. They just have different mindsets to how to protect the world. So yeah, it was comical a little bit of this. Uh, wait, wait, i got to pick one. i got to pick one. This is hard. 
I'm going to go with the fact that they decided they're going to build a Bumblebee Jaeger. <sighs> yes, they did. They built a Bumblebee Jaeger. <sighs> Half the size of the other one. Twice as bloody annoying. It's meant to be the one that the teenagers built for herself called Scrappy. We know what happened last time we introduced a character called Scrappy to a much loved. Maybe this isn't much loved. A franchise. It nearly killed Scooby Doo. So there. This one didn't like Bumblebee character. Sorry. I know it's kind of important to everything, but it just annoyed me. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. To be honest, my overall fears for this movie is it is a basic, solid, easy to watch sequel to an original movie. It is a no brains needed film. It has lots of action that's going to take your attention away from the lack of actual character development. But my biggest problem, I have to say, is this does follow the Independence Day resurgence model. We have charismatic lead son taking a lead role. We have lesser known basic pretty boy Hollywood character in Scott Eastwood after Liam Hensworth taking that role. We have the idea of aliens coming back when we killed them, I think. And we also have the arrogance to believe that there is this is almost a preparation movie to a potential sequel. And I feel that is exactly why the people think Independence Day Resurgence people hated. But alas, we say this, it is actually a good way to do this in its own right. It's going to get the bang average rating of two and a half out of five. I'm sorry, I can't give it more. I can't give it worse because I can't sit here and hate these type of movies. They are ones that you could put on and not care for two hours. Just see things blow up and watch pretty colours. So let me know what you think of Pacific Rim Uprising and the first Pacific Rim, because why not? Let's talk about something we might have liked. Until next time, I will be back, but I will be going to do what I do best. And that is watch movies.